everyone. I'm Alyssa. And I'm Brandon. And, and we're, we're the, the Wagners. Wagners. We're a husband-wife duo who travel all around the country since 2021 for Brandon's travel nursing job. We love hiking, car camping, new cities, and of course, the best food and drink. Along with adventure, we always look for ways to keep our travel budget-friendly. So pack your bags and join us as we wander together. Hey Wanders, welcome back to another Travel Tip Tuesday here on Wandering with the Wagners, where we always try to make travel accessible and affordable for everyone. And on that train of thought, today we are talking about the always sexy, the always glamorous budgeting. All jokes aside, budgeting is definitely a super important part of having a successful trip. As typically the biggest barrier to travel is not the lack of desire, but the lack of funds. So it is a very important part. It's not as exciting to talk about, but it is necessary if we want to have great successful trips. So of course there are some things that are just plain expensive and there's not very much that we can do about that. But today I'm going to share with you a few of our favorite tricks to save money and some hacks to maximize our dollars as best we can on every trip we go on. Let's go. So very first thing, um, I'm not going to make a long video, video about making a budget with your own income and everything like that. There's lots of stuff on how to do that online. But something that I started doing when I was like 18 um, in my first job uh, working at a Froyo place, um, I've always set up my uh, different savings accounts kind of as goals that I have. So I have a vacation fund. I've had one for almost 10 years now. Um, so every 10% of every paycheck that I get goes into that vacation fund, whether I worked a lot that week and I made a lot of money or if I was really sick and I only worked like one shift and it's like 10 bucks, 10 bucks or a hundred, whatever it is, 10% of every paycheck is going to go into that vacation fund. So of course it's up to you how you would like to use it. If you would like to do only bigger vacation funds like, um, hotels, cars, or if you would like to use it for every single purchase you make while you're on vacation, that is all up to you. But adding that little bit every single week is always a good way to build up a lot of money pretty quickly. So we always have a nice little financial little stack of money set aside for our vacations. So we are always ready for our vacations. So if traveling is a priority for you guys, like it is for us, you might want to consider making a separate fund just for vacations. Let's talk about planning like a big week long vacation, maybe in a far away destination, something that like takes a lot of coordinating that can be a little scary, especially if you don't have like a coordinator or you're not going through like a cruise or a resort where things are planned for you. So let's talk about um, different ways to plan that. So just a reminder, I don't get paid to make these videos. All of these recommendations are truly my own. Um, so this is a site that we use when we are planning our Europe trip, and it is very, very helpful. So let's visit budgetyourtrip.com. So this is budgetyourtrip.com. This site is awesome because it will give you the prices for different categories in any place you want to look up. So if you pair this with an Excel spreadsheet, you are pretty set for success. So um, since I went to Amsterdam and I have that on my list, let's just walk through it with Amsterdam. So I type in Amsterdam here and then I search it. And then you see right away, it gives me different things like just general travel costs, hotel prices, free things to do, things like that. So let's just go to regular travel costs. So I love this site. So first of all, um, you can use any, you can switch it to any form of currency that you use. Um, as you guys know, I'm based in the U.S. and I imagine most of the people are in the channel are from the U.S. because of the main content that I cover here. Um, but for any of our international friends, you can change the, um, the units on this to whatever your currency is. Um, but I'll just, for argument's sake, I'm just going to keep it in U.S. dollars. So um, you, it will tell you all the prices, but what I love about this is it will break everything down into categories. So we see up here, it just gives us the general overview. You should plan to spend about $188 per day on your vacation in Amsterdam. And then it says um, $47 meals, 21 local transportation, 
And then it goes even further than that. So if you go down, it will tell you the week for one person, for two people, for a month. And then you can go down and it will break things down even more. So we have different types of hotels. We have, um, I do have price. Okay. And then we have um, transportation. We have food. So this site is awesome. So um, when we were planning our Europe trip, we wanted to go to multiple stops and we were trying to decide where we wanted to go. So I started just by cracking open an Excel spreadsheet and I just wrote down all of the places that I was interested in. So then um, this site made a really great compliment to this. I would search for the categories that I care about the most, the things that I knew I would be spending. So that would be like the hotel, the transportation, the food, and then the activities, because I like to do a lot of stuff on vacation. So, um, and then for everything I do, I have to times it by two because it's me and my husband. So keep in mind, this is per person. So you'll have to multiply it by however many people you have with you. So once I got my price of lodging, entertainment, transportation, food, I would get my overall daily price. And then I would just times it by two. And then that would give me my price for the week. So um, I just saw in here that they do have flights, but I don't think I saw that when I was planning my trip. So if it's not, I don't know, if you don't trust it or whatever, um, super easy solution to that. So you can just type in a flight from wherever you are leaving from to where you're going to. And then they give you these little recommended prices, well, ballpark prices, and they don't have to be super accurate. But what I did, what I would just take the, I didn't look at connecting or anything like that. I just took these prices and I found the mean. And then again, I would times it by two for me and my husband. So then when I look at my spreadsheet, I'm able to get my overall price of lights or my weekly prices, and then I just added everything together. And that gave me my overall price for a vacation to whatever destination. Um, obviously, this goes without saying, but make sure you do the same amount of days and people for everything so you get the most accurate number. Um, so of course, this is, you know, just a ballpark number, but it is pretty helpful. Um, and then what I like to do is I filtered it by uh, price low to high. So then I kind of, you see this line here under Germany, I kind of just decided to cap it at that point. So I didn't want to spend any more money than that. So, well, you know, this is only two more dollars, but those were the places that I was really interested in for the price. So um, once you do that, you are able to decide which places will be the best on your budget, the most interesting to you. I even took some notes over here like the main attractions, the weather, um, you know, things like that. So then you see the highlighted ones are the places that we ended up going. And then we added London, but that was not part of the original plan, actually. And then you see I have uh, Amsterdam highlighted in a different color. That is because that was the cheapest to fly into. So we were able to buy it about half. So we were able to fly into Amsterdam and make our plan that way, knowing that that would give us the cheapest airfare, the best price, the most bang for our buck. So this site is super, super helpful in just planning, you know, what to expect. Obviously, if you have somewhere you want to go, you know, you have somewhere you want to go. But if you're kind of not sure and you're flexible and you're weighing your options, something like this is really helpful because, you know, we were interested in Switzerland, but for like almost half the price of going to Switzerland, we could go to Amsterdam. So, you know, it's good to know just those ballpark numbers so you can make the most informed decision from there. So I absolutely love this tool. Um, I hope you guys will too. I will obviously link it in the bottom for you. It is budgetyourtrip.com. It is awesome. Please let me know if you have any questions in the comments or anything I didn't make clear. It's pretty um, intuitive, pretty user-friendly. So hopefully you can manage, but if you have any questions, Please feel free to leave me a comment in the bottom and I will help you as much as I can. Tip number three is going to be a vacation bundle and packages. If you were with us when I did a video in Las Vegas about how to save money in Las Vegas, this was one of the tips then and still is now. A lot of major cities have these like sightseeing passes or um, attraction passes, they'll call them different things. 
But if there's a lot of tourist attractions to do in a city, typically they make a pass for you where you can either spend X amount of dollars and get X amount of activities or it's like certain predefined ones. So I should take my own advice on this. I kind of forget about these until it's too late. But if you know you're going to a city and you want to do a bunch of different tourist attractions in that city, it's probably going to be worth your time to check online and see if they have any bundle packages. So you can do a lot of attractions for just one set price instead of paying separately for every attraction you want to do. So tip number four, this is, you can use this for any vacation. Honestly, you can just lose, use this for life in general. It's all about priorities. So you get to decide the type of vacation you want to have. If you just watch the Euro series that I just posted, you can probably tell that we don't spend a lot of money on hotels. We're fine with hotels just to be able to sleep and shower. We would rather spend our money doing a lot of attra er, attractions and tours. So some people like to do, you know, the five star resorts, all inclusive. That's totally fine. If that is the type of vacation you want to have, you go for it. But just thinking about, you know, what you want to put your money to knowing you have an X amount of dollars for the vacation. Just think about the things that are going to be interesting to you and the things that you want to do in your vacation, because guess what? You're the one taking your vacation. So just plan for the things that you want to do and really prioritize those things that are interesting to you. So sadly, some things are obviously more than others. If you are really into museums, you're probably going to spend a lot more money than someone who's just going out for like hiking and nature things. So, you know, there's only so much you can control, but just thinking about how much of your budget you want to allocate towards food, towards lodging, towards activities, just kind of making that mental priority of which things do we want to do the most. So tip number five, and then this also goes along with number four, but it's a little more specific. Let's talk a lot about food. So food is obviously one of the main things that people spend money on when they're on vacation. We obviously love getting local cuisine, local food, um, but that doesn't mean you have to spend three meals a day eating out every single day for a week. That adds up so much. So if you're looking to still try some food, but you know, do things on the cheaper side, grocery stores, like it, you know, just going to the grocery store, that would always typically be our first thing in the morning. We go to the grocery store for some breakfast, just get some yogurt, bananas, whatever you'd like. And then you can still even try local food that way. We find some things in the grocery stores overseas that we don't have in the States. So that's always exciting to do that. We always got fresh pastries. And one of the best flat whites I've ever had in my whole life was in a grocery store in Amsterdam for one euro. So that's pretty exciting. Obviously, if you have an Airbnb, you can cook in your hotel. So that is another way to keep costs down. But even if you don't, if you're just in a small hotel, you can even get things for later in the day. You don't even just have to go for that meal. Like a lot of times when we were going on our breakfast runs, we'd also pick up some like ready to eat sandwiches or other things like that that we could just bring with us. So then whenever we were hungry, if we knew we were having a busy day, we could just kind of eat on the run. This is something that we do in the U.S. when we travel all the time, especially with day trips. Since we have access to our own food at our house, a lot of times we'll honestly just pack like a lunch for our excursions and then maybe we'll go out to a restaurant or somewhere to eat for dinner um, because, you know, there are different local cuisines and flavors in different regions and cities that are fun to try. Um, but you don't have to eat out for all meals all the time. So just a fast way to keep money down is just go to the grocery store, pack some food, and you'll save a lot of money that way. So that is pretty much the basics of vacation budgeting. I think next week I'll make a video more specifically about planning a vacation. Um, I figured I'd just do the basics of budgeting this time since they go hand in hand, but you know, I didn't want to make it too long because it's objectively not that exciting to talk about, but very important. So I figured I'd just easy dose the, the practical information for you guys. But I hope this gives you some practical steps to make your dream vacation a dream come true. Um, as always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below for me. I would love to be able to help you any way that I can if I didn't make anything clear enough or you have other questions. But thank you so much for watching. Thank you for traveling with us. We love to travel with you guys. Um, we hope that we make travel very accessible for people of all budgets. 
Of course, we hope you, we inspire you to plan your own vacation. So please remember to like and subscribe, and we will see you guys next week here on Wandering with the Wagners. Bye! P.S. We do have an Instagram. It's not very poppin', but if you want to be one of our first few followers, you can follow us on at Wandering with the Wagners 1020, and I will link that in the description for you as well. I just try to post uh, various pictures of places we've been and maybe a little bit of practical information. So if you want to spend some more time with us on the gram, you can do that, and hopefully I will see you guys there.